hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. The dripping tap has returned. How are you doing, Sean? The tap star is back. You are I'm right? fine, Russ. I'm fine. I'm fine, mate. How's Barnsley? Ponty, the Pontifract. I'm, I'm okay. It's fine. It, it's all right. They, they said it was going to snow, but it hadn't snowed. Did you take your son to Mick Wales Gym to go training? No, yeah, Russ. Tell you the truth, for this lockdown, I'm having the same problem with you. We're eight years old. You were fighting me. You were loving boxing. He's got into this technology like I have to force him out of the house and bribe him. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to take him and my girlfriend's going to go. My girlfriend does boxing three times a week and I, and I train boxing. I had a bad injury and I train boxing. Yeah. And uh, I'm hoping that he's going to get back in it. I, I make him train and do, do it with him on a weekend but it, I've asked him three times and he just don't want to go. All he wants to do is play Fortnite, Minecraft and watch YouTube videos. Yeah, I've got the same sort of problem. You, you can't get, let your kids out these days because there's nonsense running wild and there's this virus and it's like we're all programmed, isn't it? You think? Oh, we're in the system, aren't we? We're in the system now. It's like being in, in Moreland's prison, basic enhanced and uh, basic standard and enhanced. You get too enhanced and they put you back to basic and you keep going on a merry-go-round round house box. <laughs> I know, mate. Yes. But anyway, let's move on to some boxing topics and not COVID. Uh, what did you What do you think about Luke Campbell against Ryan Garcia? What did you make of the fight, Sean? Well, we both we spoke about it before, Russ, about Luke Campbell. He's missing uh, minerals and ingredients at highest level. He's a good fighter, but he's not a great or an elite special fighter, yeah. And I was more impressed with Ryan Garcia. When he knocked Ryan Garcia down, Ryan Garcia, it was a similar scenario. Do you know when Deontay Wilder knocked Tyson Fury down? And everybody thought he was dead. Tyson Fury got back up and he pushed Deontay Wilder back, didn't he? Yeah. That's what Ryan Garcia did. I saw minerals in the young man. He's got, he's got some skills, yeah? He got hit and hurt. And from the minute he got hurt, he started pushing Campbell back. Campbell didn't go fuck kill. And then he left his son exposed. I saw it when he fought the Frenchman, Mendy. I know that Eddie Hearn just types these gold medalists up. Russ, these gold medalists, when they get to it, they might be brilliant amateurs. But when you get in with tough men at elite level, when your chin gets tested and stuff like that, that's when you want to find out about a fighter, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. But I enjoyed the fight. It was cracking. It was a great smashing fight, yeah? But we both said on WhatsApp, you said Garcia were going to win on points, and I agreed with you. And you said he's European level, Will Campbell. And I agreed with you on that one, yeah? Yeah. And that's all I can really say on matter. I'm a, I'm a bit... He's come out on IFL. He's gutted this and that. Luke Campbell, I watched video... And at the end of the day, he must know down deep in his heart that he's not good enough at that level. Yeah, must do, yeah. Do you feel his career will be... He'll, he'll feel a little bit like he hasn't fulfilled his potential. We're winning Olympic gold, but yet he's only got a Commonwealth belt out of the six levels, hasn't he, really? Well, yeah, it, like you always state about... It's like a trade, isn't it? You start as an apprentice and you work up through levels, yeah? Yeah. And these levels really get... He, he got thrown in as this superstar because he's won gold on a Perfect example, Audley Addison, yeah? yeah? Brilliant Olympian, yeah? yeah? Gets in with big boys, gets tested, gets found out. Yeah. So, all right, throwing these gold medalists straight in and this and that. Like you, I'm all for what you say on your channel, Russ. It's all about working your crafts and working through through the sections and through the channels. And then you find your level, don't you? Yeah, you do, yeah. I feel that Luke Campbell's he's 34 and he in September and he might have missed the boat now. And I think the period where he missed the boat was well, when he waited three years to rematch Mendy. That period cost him dearly because if he'd rematched him straight away, he'd have been three years ahead of where he is now, wouldn't he? Yeah, but... And an art, Russ, do you think 
that Luke Campbell can compete with like to Devin Haney, Lopez, Lemonchenko. It, that lightweight division, it's just it's just full of talent, Russ. And it's Tank just not good enough, mate. Tank Davis. Somebody said somebody said last night to me that he's got to he could move up. I'm not being funny, he's not strong enough to move up. He looked like a boy when he fought Mendy, didn't he? Yeah, there's five there, isn't there? Aren't them top five at that weight? And he's fought two of them and lost Danny. So, does he deserve a third chance? It, it, well, not he really. Lost, no, I don't. Lost twice, I don't think. And, he, and it, so he's not doing anything with the elite guys at that weight. So, how would he do if he moved up a weight to 140? I mean, I've heard somebody's mentioning this last couple of days Josh Taylor against Luke Campbell, but. Josh Taylor would just he'd go he'd cut him down like cheese. Be a car crash, Russ. Car crash. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I mean, Luke Campbell says all right things, does all right things. He's been media trained and this and that. And they all know how to play the game when they've been beaten that, but I just don't think he's a world level fighter. I don't want to hear it. And it's hard the harsh reality is sometimes. You're just not good enough. They might be able to squeeze him a world title, the regular belt, from some angle at some at some stage at game, <coughs> late waiting game. But he's not going to be on that that level with them, is he? There's no no shame in that. No shame. Listen, in that. I admire him for what he's done. He's yeah. he's been he's dedicated his centre craft, but it just comes down to fine margins. Similar with George Groves, it took him three times to win world title after. One of my head old Sprock iced him, yeah? And it's a yeah. similar sort of scenario. He might win a world title, but like what they're gonna do, are they gonna is it gonna be a world title uh like somewhere like Beefy Smith fought where not against it where Beefy Smith won his world title and the fight he won't elite, what he? Yeah, the, 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 well, that's because he was navigated by his manager, Joe Gallagher. But let me just stop you there on George Groves. He had four goes to win world title. Two oh, with, it four. Two with Froch, Bad old Jack, and on fourth one, should enough. But getting back to uh, what you said about Beefy Smith, it's just that rankings go, isn't it? Sometimes you can be ranked number one and number two is behind you and belt becomes vacant, doesn't it? It's not the fighter's fault, is it? It's usually politics, but... Beefy got that, and he's had a, he's had a fight with Canelo, and he's had one in with Mungir, hasn't he, in America? So he's had big fights, hasn't he? But sometimes it's how it goes. Froch ended up with vacant WBC, didn't he, against Pascal when Joe Calzaghe filled his nappy and vacated? So that's just the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? I suppose. But getting back to Luke Campbell, no, I don't think he wins the world title at 135 unless a, a regular belt becomes available. And they can manoeuvre uh, him into an easy, easy fight. No, I don't think he does. What do you think on that fight, Russ? That just been called. What's meant to have been called? Uh, I was expecting Eubank to fight Jalo, and I'd love to see that fight because it'd been a great fight and test. But he's, he's fighting Mungia next, isn't he? Oh, Eubank. Yeah, uh, if it happens, because there's a lot of talk about a lot of fights happening until they happen. All pie and sky in it, but I think that's probably a good fight for Eubank. That I think, I think Eubank could probably be a favourite in that, mate. In my opinion. Well, they said that Liam Williams are going to do it, and we'll go back to Beefy Smith. Beefy Smith destroyed Liam Williams. Liam Williams is fan his level and he's won his last five, yeah. But they haven't been world class opposition, have they? Liam, Let's be right. Liam Williams has been wrapped in cotton wool since the Beefy Smith losses. Out of the five fighters that fought Canelo, Beefy Smith did fantastic in a couple of rounds. I watched it on Box Nation, that fight. and He got Canelo on ropes a few times and put him under pressure. There's only one per, one man, and he's my favorite, greatest boxer of all time in my book, who's done anything to Canelo. That one, Mayweather, he made him look silly, didn't he? Yeah, but he got Canelo at the right time, didn't he? Yeah, but you're saying that Canelo had had 40 fights. He'd just fought Shane Mosley. He'd been a professional since yeah. he was 15. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but he's kicked on since Mayweather fight Canelo, hasn't he? Made him a better fight, yeah. But yeah. we'll go on to Canelo. Sometimes. We'll go on to Canelo later. But Canelo, for me, like I've said to you before, he's on some sort of designer steroid, I think. 
sometimes uh, a loss can help you. I mean, I, and it's not nice when fighters have to say, when they come out of things like, I'm going to beat him, I'll knock him out, I'll beat him like he's, I'm his, like, he's, like I'm his daddy, I'll take him to school. Then they get beat and they go setbacks, paved, way that, paved the way for comebacks. And even Muhammad Ali got beat. I know it's a cliche and that, but sometimes when when you when you when you're coming out with stuff like that and you've had a fourth loss, it gets a bit repetitive, doesn't it? And Luke Campbell's now had four losses, hasn't he? Um, I don't I don't know where he comes back from that this now. I don't know where he comes back, and it's harsh harsh, harsh game in it boxing. It's full of insecure people, and it's harsh that people like us. Can sit here and say, "Well, oh, he's not going to come back from that." Because who are we? We're not in ring, are we? But we're just giving an opinion. It's all very well when they're knocking people out, and we all say, "Well done," and that. But when they get beat, they've got to take. Well, you got beat, and they have to take it. You've got to take rough with smooth. Do you agree with that, Sean? Totally rough. Right. Let's That's what make you. The- right. Let's move on from Luke Campbell now, then. Right. Here's another, here's another topic for you. We didn't speak about this. Callum Smith and Canelo. Now you want to talk about that, don't you, Sean? Yeah, me, me dad what me, me, me dad me, me dad talk about boxing. My dad thought Smith did well for the first two rounds. I said to my dad, it's all right doing well for the first two rounds. You were just feeling him out. I think he would have a chosen opponent, Smith, for Canelo, because he just fought cover eleven. There were different Similar to that, straight line fighters, tall, rangy. And I just thought levels were totally different. I could say this about Canelo. He's some, he's on some, I think he's on some sort of design of steroid, but he's got a granite chin and he's a brilliant fighter, like we've just spoke. And he's got better since Mayweather lost. I agree with that, yeah? Yeah. And... Uh, it's a spit of the sad state of the fair, though, when we've got pound for pound king and face of boxing when he's been done for taking steroids, don't you think? Yeah, I do, I do yeah. Nobody seems to mention it, does he, in any interviews about the, the wild... It's all about paper. Yeah, nobody, not that. All them who've got access to Canelo, that, uh, that girl uh, with big knockers, what's she called, Finno Boxing, she, she, she gets a lot of access to him, Michelle Phelps and that. Nobody mentions anything about is there drug testing for this fight? And if so, how many tests have you had, Canelo? I never heard that once in any interviews. For any of them, any of these fighters, whether they've been clean all their lives or whether they've had dirty tests, nobody mentions it. It's like a taboo subject. And I want I want to I want to know. I want to know have they been tested? Because usually when Tony Bellew, people like him, I'm not a big fan of him, but he always prides himself on the fact that, there you go, I've just had another drug test, there you go, these are them testing me, and another drug test that I've passed. But how many more fighters are doing that? Are they even testing them in this pandemic? Because nobody seems to be mentioning it, do they? We've had this subject before, haven't we? Until we get to the bottom of it, like you've just said, like you said before to me, Russ, Either let them take it or don't take it and ban them for life, like that young man said last night on that lizard video. Yeah, ban them for life and send them to prison so they stop doing it. Yeah, what lizard? I want to see. Sorry, what lizard video? You put monitor lizard out video last night with a young lad oh, from right. it. Oh, yeah, is that what they've called it? Yeah, yeah, monitor lizard. Man, this is sure we've used that title before. I'll have to have a word with him. Is that what it's called? Monitor lizard. Well, it, it, oh, that. Uh... Arlie Marshall, young yeah, Arlie. All right. yeah, he's right, young Arlie. If the uh, if they get caught, it's got to be life bans. I don't want to hear all that about my brother uh, swap drinks with me or something, or or it's it's nasal spray, or it's a bit of wild boar meat, or I've been spiked, or I don't want to hear any of that, or dragging it out through lawyers and hoping you can go bankrupt and. Look, there's every tr- every trick in book being pulled, aren't there? How many people have come out when they've been tested? And is there over 700 people failed tests now? But how many of them 700 over years have gone, yeah, yeah, uh, I was guilty? Is it, no. my, is it one, one, that girl? 
there's a girl come out in the who, who uh, I forgot her name now, but Terry Chapman the Armour did a good podcast on it with Larry Alabama Bama Bama Bama, whatever his name is, the sprinter bloke with dreads who was a journeyman boxer. He did a video with Terry and they nailed it. But there's a woman come out and I forgot her name now. And might, I'm not sure. I can't, I'm not going to say her name in case I get it wrong. But they, they, he nailed it, Terry, regarding drugs. She came out and went, yeah, I'm guilty. I was taking them and all that. But how many more? I mean, you've even got Jarrow Miller now saying he's been stitched up and he's failed four, hasn't he? It's like Kid Galarad, isn't it? Saying that his brother put us. Steroid pill in his protein shake. Well, I've a good idea who put some in his protein shake. I don't think it was his brother, but we don't know. Excellent. When you've got a brother who's in prison who can admit anything, he can admit anything, can't he? Because it's called the TIC, taking into consideration if the charge is less than the one that you're in jail for. If you're in jail yeah. for stealing a car, for example, and you kill somebody and admit that, well, you'll get done. But if you admit nicking a piece of fish from fish market, but you're in for nicking a car or handling a stolen car, they'll take that into consideration. So him saying, yeah, I, I spiked his drink or whatever, he, it's not for somebody to do that to help the brother, isn't it? But I don't believe out like that. I don't believe it because I'm one of them people that I've been around block too long. But if you can get away with it doing that, good luck to you, but don't dirty the sport and don't embarrass yourself. I didn't believe it. I never believed it. So, Kid Gallard, I don't believe it. But I think you're a good technical fighter. He's, but he's, he's not somebody you pay to watch, is he? But I think he's technically he's very, very good, isn't he? Very good. Yeah, very. I agree with that. Typical Ingle fighter. Yeah, good skills. Not, well, that Josh Warrington fight, he did well in that Warrington fight, but he didn't really want to engage. He didn't want to engage, does he, he Russ? Oh, did it? I asked Josh Whale about it. In Josh's gym, I said, Josh, who wins? And he said, Kid Galahad doesn't engage, he's not there to be it. And he might eat with a couple of jabs, get on his bike, you know, like Terry Harper. They don't engage, do they, them sort of fighters? They're all for points, aren't they, Russ? They, well, it's just called the sweet science, isn't it? And that, that's the name of the game. We all can't be Froch Keslers or Ward Gatties, can we? Do you know what I mean? So, Somebody. Eggington Cheesemans, but go on, sorry. Somebody said to me about this and that, they're like, he's no knockout eyes, this and that. I says they don't call it knockout, they call it boxing, don't they, Russ? Yeah, they call it boxing. And you've got to be able to do it all to be elite, haven't you? Yeah, you have. Uh, moving on from from this then, from Canelo and Smith. What, what just moving on from the Duggar show? Canelo Smith, who do you think won? Obviously, we know Canelo won, but who do you think moves on to bigger things now. Does Callum go to 175? And does Canelo stay at 168? What, what do you think happens next? Do we see Canelo Biterbia or Canelo Bivol? I don't think we will. No chance, no chance. Will we see I don't think... Callum Smith, Pascal, Callum Smith Bivol, Callum Smith Biterbia? I'd like to, I'd like to, oh, we would, I think we would now he's lost, now he's lost his O. I'd like to see him roll the dice with Callum Smith at 175, but it's going to be interesting to see if will they even stay with Eddie Earn. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it will. But Berbatev is a knockout. I'd love to see Callum Smith move up because I think he's draining his scent. I think he looks like he's when he's making weight, Russ, he looks really ill, mate. I well, think I it might I think that. I think it might advan give him an advantage. I don't believe that it's it's draining him for the simple reason. And he was knocking everybody out and winning every fight. He was making he were making the weight. He was doing all the check weigh-ins and they were ticking yeah, all the yeah. boxes to say he was safe and that. And then he were winning the fights and that's okay. But if he did knock Canelo out in round twelve, nobody would be mentioning about struggling at the weight, would they? So I don't think he he, he did. He, I don't think he had it hard to make one six eight because he he probably been around it all his life and he, he, his dad into all nutrition and gym and weights and all that. So they'll know how to take weight off. So I don't know, but you never hear Callum Smith coming out and giving it the big one, do you? But we've got to wish him well, haven't we? Because he took the fight at 32 days notice when others didn't want the fight. So you've got to applaud that, haven't you, really? 
Oh, you've got to applaud everybody from Joe Gallagher's gym, haven't you? They're all humble and down to earth, aren't they? They're not big headed, them Smith brothers and all that. And everybody that he gets, they don't get on the high, they don't get on the high horse to the rush and say, I'm this and I'm that. They're just no, normal kids like me and you. You don't see them hanging out at the back of IFL here every single day. No. Or Eddie Hearn. No, you don't you don't you don't see them uh hanging out at the back of Eddie, so they, they just go about the business, don't they? So, good luck to him, I say. But I'd like to see Callum get... Uh, when is that? I don't think Callum's had a Sky pay-per-view yet, has he? No, I bet he made a lot of money from Boxing Super Series, though, didn't he? Oh, good luck to him, but... I want him to have money. He's not had a Sky pay-per-view. Beef has not had one. You know, and you've got Bellew who's had four. He's had more than Carl Froch. Bell you four pay per views. Dylan White five. I was just about to mention not even a world champion that's five pay per views. Dylan White and a cheat as well. Yeah, come on, Ross. I know, I know you couldn't make it up, could you? Dillian oh. White, the can man. Anybody who wants it can get it. What he really means is anybody who wants it, it's not having it. They're not having it, man. I, I, I don't, I sometimes wonder what. Who's advising Dylan White? I mean, he's had a go at react, react Porte, and if I knock in a Coley fight back, but if the kid don't think he's ready, what's wrong with that? He stood up for his son, and he react, put Richard react Porte. A Cole is too much for him at this stage of the game, in my opinion. But Dylan White's come out on Sky saying, You've got to take these opportunities when they come, Richard. Well, what about when you got offered Joshua and five million? Heavyweight title at Wembley. He didn't take that, Dylan White, did he? I know, mate. I know. What well, Deontay Wilder? He got off at that fight, didn't he? Ortiz. Ortiz twice. Fought Oscar Rivers instead. End of day, he's getting wrapped up in Cotton World by Eddie. Because uh, Eddie, all Eddie's on a, all Eddie's bothered about. He's becoming a billionaire, isn't he? Yeah. Let me just say this into the camera. Dylan White. We're over 530 days now waiting for your B sample results. Where is it? That's all we want to know. And Eddie, where's your boxing record? Eddie Hills, 4 0, free by way of super heavyweight amateur star from Billy Ricky. Didn't happen, wouldn't happen, never happened. Where's your record and where's that B sample? And why is nobody asking you about Stubbub? And why is Trish Dixon? in your dad's house interviewing him and not once did he ask him about why he's in Epstein's book. All right. All you got to do, Barry Earn, is come out and say, if I had money invested in stock exchange with his hedge fund company. That's all you've got to say and then it'll go away. That's all you've got to say. You know what I mean? First, first line of conversation, Russ, before he got into his house, Barry Earns told him, mention anything about Epstein and you're not coming in. No, they wouldn't have even mentioned that. These people know who get access to them sort of people. They know they've got a good leader and rim them. They've yeah, got, yeah, I agree with you. That's got, what I respect about you. Hey, There's no rimming with you, Russ. Is there? There's no rimming. You're just straight to the point, man. Ask Dennis Hobson if I rim. Do I, heck, man? I left him Dennis in Lee. Drove off in his 70 grand car. See you later, alligator in the swamp. Proud it. it. Hey, it, what did you think of Dennis' show? We hadn't spoke about that since then. Uh, I thought production on it were good. I did, yeah. I thought it was fantastic, and it were all set out. Fights were poor, like Cash Ellis fight against that kid wasn't even a test. Best fight, the, the, the Romanian last were tough, yeah. But Tommy Frank is brilliant with his feet. But do you think he, do you think Tommy Frank will win a world title? Honest opinion, Russ? No, I don't either. I like him though, he's a nice kid, but. Dennis said the world to get him a world title, but no, Tommy Frank, I don't think he's got it in him. There's not wrong with that. He's got best out of his career, hasn't he? But when you're knocking British titles back, like they were a couple of years ago, I said, then where are we going with Tommy Frank here? You're knocking British titles back. Oh, we're going in a different direction. Well, what direction are they going in? 13 wins, no stoppages, and one defeat now. So I don't know, but you've got to wish him well. And his trainer pulled him out because it's his baby, isn't it? He's had him since he was eight year old, nine year old. So it's an heartbreaking story, but 
if Dennis is going to build his boxing future around Tommy Frank as an headline act, I don't know where. No he's, chance. I don't know where it's no going. Chance. He needs signings, mate. He needs signings. He's watched what I said six years ago. Then you need some signings. He just said he was going to pay for them. He's had opportunity to sign people, but he's got no stable, and that's the bottom line. And if you say anything, you're an hater. But what I'm saying now is not what I haven't said to him for years. So then we need signings, or you need signings. That's what he needs new signings. He needs some fresh blood. So, Agree 100%, Russ. The guy, what do you think? For, you keep, the guy Cash Alley fought. David Adelaide fought him in his third fight. Cash has just had his 19th fight against him. So, is that progress? No. There you go. He fought him before as well, Auntie. Yeah, and he fought him before. So, maybe they just had to get him a run out and they can come up. You can, you can have an excuse for everything in boxing. Well, we had to get him a run out. We had no opponent. Yeah, you have months to get an opponent, though. But when you're getting an opponent to start with, what you do... You have a plan A, and if that bloke fails COVID or gets injured, there's a plan B. Sometimes there's a plan C. And if Cash is going to be Ed Lair, that Dennis wants him to be at heavyweight, you've got to have a plan A, B, and C. That's my opinion. But it's been very hard with this COVID, so you've got to give him a pass with that show because the actual show were a bit different, wasn't it? It was nice to see that it was different, but bottom line is the the quality of the show weren't very good, were it really? But the production and all that, you'd have to say were top notch, I think. Brilliant, yeah. You put Dave Allen in a suit, I think that with we, we Glenn McClory, I think they'd have pulled it off. But Dave turning up in tracky, it's just Dave, isn't it? <laughs> Trying to be different. But he looked like he'd just been ticked car boat, didn't he? Looked like he'd just been for a pizza, didn't he, in Cunningsborough in middle at night. Yeah, yeah. Hungry. But Good luck to them all. Good luck to Dennis. That's what I say. So basically, what you're saying with Tommy Frank is that Dennis is just switching lanes and he's going to try and take an easy route to try and get best out of him he can. We just turn this off. It's doing me head in. Yeah, well, Dennis might be able to manoeuvre him, but the days of Dennis manoeuvring people were like Clinton Woods, Stewie Hall, Jamie McDonnell, and all that. It's a long time ago. Boxing's moved on since then. You know, boxing's moved on for since then. So I'm hoping he might be able to get Tommy a British or... But he's got to roll the dice now, hasn't they, with Tommy? He's got, he's got to be in some fights now. But he's been in fights now. He's been in life and deaths. He's been injured in one and he's still kept going. So he's obviously... He's got a bit of summit inside him, hasn't he? But sometimes you can have all that art inside you and it just ain't enough, is it? So we'll see, won't we? But I'd like to see him fight Sonny Edwards for British. Yeah, 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 I would. I would. You mentioned that before. I'll be mentioning That'd that be a great time. cracking fight. Mentioning it two and a half year. Right, yeah, yeah. The, moving on. So we spoke about Canelo and Smith. Canelo probably going to stay at 168. Smith, I hope he goes to 175. Uh, Kel Brook, Amir Khan. What do you think to that? We've got 19 well, minutes left. It's going to get out everybody's mouth what war, isn't it? Because the two biggest names in boxing. I'm not going to say I won't watch it, Russ, because I will watch it and enjoy it. And I still think Kel Brook beats him, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I think Kel beats him, yeah. But uh, well to wait till we've got it country at minute, like... Uh, if they do fight, I, well, I don't think they'll fight. I think they'll fight. I don't think I think they'll fight a catch way. But well to age, we've got we've got Conor Ben, which I don't rate at all, and then we've got Josh Kelly, really, haven't we? Wouldn't you say Conor Ben's improved, Sean? I'd say he's improved, but it it, it, it just looks to me like he's he's had a bit everything given to him all his life, and I don't think he's got great. I've seen him have life and death on Sky shows. What was that fighter what he fought when it was a really tough fight for him? And then he's coming out, then Conor Ben saying he's the bee's knees, he's this and that. He's so arrogant. Did you see him on that last Sky card? What about Conor Ben against Eubank Jr. at 154 next year? Could that be a good Eubank, fight? He might be going for Eubank, Eubank Jr. destroys him, doesn't he? What, at 154? 
Mine's you. But do you think your bank will make one five four? Well, you never know. Connor Ben might fill out in another eighteen months. Listen, it'd be a great dream fight down the line. Listen to me, right? Eddie Earn and his dad, Chris Eubank and his dad, Connor Ben and his dad, will all be devastated that the different there's a difference in weight between them both. But Chris Eubank's not very tall, and I think personally, I personally think that. At back of their minds, down the line, they'd be open for some kind of fight between them two. They won't be bothered. They won't all got hurt or anything like that. They won't be bothered as long as they can control the show and be in charge. They won't be bothered if Conor Ben got smashed up or anything like that. They'd want that fight on pay per view down the line. They would because the, 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 that's what they like. The, the businessmen aren't they? the trade. The, the trading in meat. They're not bothered about. It them kids They're not bothered yeah. trading in meat it's business to them and they're detached from all that criticism so nostalgia would sell fight wouldn't it with, with history of the fathers yeah you'd have them it in every become... press conference wouldn't you both at fathers he'd be there with Monica and Kane wouldn't it you know going he's neither been the thespian he's a thespian a very hard puncher <laughs> And you'd have uh, uh, Nigel Ben there saying, I'm going to knock him out, I'm knock him out, I'm going to tear up and all that. And uh, they'd sell fight for him, wouldn't they? Do you know what I mean? But uh, it, it, it is what it is, isn't it? But All right, then. Uh, what next for Billy Joe, Sean? Uh, well, they're saying Canelo, but Canelo's fighting that, that lad who Eubank Jr. smashed to pieces. What's his name? Uh, Yildirim or something. Yildirim, yeah. I think Canal's going to fight him now because they've got because we've got they've called it to within ninety days or something, yeah. Well, they say they're saying he's going to fight him in Mexico and Billy Joe next. But Billy Joe wants to step up plate and fade Dimitri Andrade, doesn't he? That's that'd be a good fight. Yeah, but it's yet another fight where Billy Joe's not fought Canelo or Triple G, isn't it? Well, I was going to go on to Triple G next. I, I mentioned him. He, were, he looked amazing in his last fight. For a 35-year-old man, I looked at him and I thought, has he been on design instead of Has he took a leaf out of Eubank's book? I mean, uh, Canelo's book. But, but I'd love to see Canelo Triple G free because I thought Triple G won't first fight. Canelo won't second fight. Yeah. And, I, and I'd like to see outcome at third fight, wouldn't you? It's a no-brainer, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think they'll take that. I think it's too, too much of a risky fight. But Triple G's on slide now, though, isn't he, really? Let's have it right. Yeah. He's on slide. And uh, Canelo's the man, isn't he? But, uh, all right, then. Uh, Brooke Khan. Does it happen? Do we care? Well, at this moment in time, with virus and all that, I'd, I'd love to see it happen because I just want to see good, decent fates what are evenly, what, somewhat like matched, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't think, I don't think it'll happen with this pandemic as it is because they want to fill a stadium and they want pay-per-view and money, won't they? At the end of the day, it's the, it's the sailing, it, the sailing on the boat away from, away from the shores fight, isn't it? They both want paper, don't they? Yeah, I suppose, yeah. I suppose. It's uh, they've, they've milked all avenues and wrung as much out of the careers as they can and gone round all the houses and worked with everybody, different promoters and that. Kel Brooks worked with different promoters, Amir has. And Eddie Earn said he won't work with both of them again, didn't he? Because he said Khan messed him about and Brooke, he, he weren't team Eddie, but I can assure you if they want, if they're both going to fight, and he would crawl back on his hands and knees and just say, it's a business, isn't it? It's a business. It's, it's what's best for my broadcaster. The brass neck on these people is unbelievable because money is their God. No about pride about these people. This is why I keep saying to people, these people are not your family. They're not your friends. 
when the time's up for them to move on, they'll move on. It's the name of the game. So don't fall for all that bullshit. But that's how you've got to be. You've got to be cold as ice in this game. I mean, Don King used to say that uh, George Foreman, uh, Fraser were his guy, didn't he? He went to Arena, didn't he, in Kingston, 1973, in limousine with Joe Fraser. And the and same limousine went back to hotel with Foreman. And where were Fraser? He were nowhere, were he? He was never a world champion again after that, worry, Joe Fraser. And only two men beat him, didn't they? Joe Fraser. So it is what it is, isn't it? But it's it's a cruel sport, mate. But but uh, I don't know. Kel Brook and Amir Khan, the shot to pieces, mate. Kel Brook, as soon as he gets tapped on face, he's turning away, isn't he? Oh, not many. So it'd be just rinsing more money out at public. Have these people no shame if they put that on? I don't think they have, mate. They've got no shame. And Amir's got millions, but if they put that fight on, it'd just be another kick in teeth for boxing. They'd just be rinsing people yet again. They'd have to spend a million on produc production and PR and all that just for that, you know, that fight. A lot of time and effort. They'd have to wring everything out, every YouTuber, every media guy. They'd have to spin every story. If they put that fight on, you'd get the same old people saying, well, I'd still want to watch it, you know, like Caldwell and Gareth A. Davis. But deep down inside, if it were any other promoter putting it on, they'd slate it to death. But they know that their future earning potential hanging around the boxing scene and hanging out the back of people depends on what they say regarding that fight. And if that fight happens, you're going to see a lot of people in the boxing industry. And half of them are in my helmets every month, well, mainly all of them, I think, most of them. They're all going to show what, they, what they're what they worth. They're all going to show their true colours. If Calm Brook gets made, you're going to see people just look so embarrassing. It's unbelievable. Instead of coming out saying, look... The shot to pieces, it shouldn't happen. But if you start seeing that from the beginning of it happening, you'll not be getting any access to be invited to be part of it and to earn money and to be took to London on trains and put in hotels and that. So you're going to see some people show the true colours if that fight happens. But it shouldn't happen. Somebody will get hurt, mate. Somebody will get hurt in that fight. So. Basically... And he's only jumped on bagging, bandwagon because he's all he's bothered about his paper. He's, he's thinking to he's another couple of million to put it bank, isn't he? Sean, you're talking about paper now. You sound like some roadman gangster. No, oh, it's just a phrase, isn't it? But you've got a shoebox full of bricks under bed, haven't you? <laughs> you said that last time. No bricks in my house, mate. I'm only pulling your leg. <laughs> you fuck uh, you. Uh, you, also said, you also said last time I looked. I look 90 for my age. How old are you, Sean? I'm 43. Sorry, young man. I forgot you. You're the model now for Lacoste, aren't you? I don't know about model. <laughs> modeling Lacoste. How can I compete with scenes like that when you're modeling for Lacoste? I'm not modeling for Lacoste this morning, am I? No, it doesn't matter. You've got that, on, mate. Yeah. It's not a, bad, not a bad firm to model, is it? No, it'd be nice to get some money out of them instead of goods. <laughs> Goods is better, hey. Goods is better than no, isn't it? Well, you've got to start small, haven't you? You've got to get some out of it, Joe, haven't you? We're not, we can't keep doing it for free, can we? Uh, all right, then. Uh, what do you think about Savannah Marshall, Clarissa Shields? Does it happen? I'd love to see it happen, would you? Give me some quick answer to these questions I throw at you, then. Why is there a silence around Lewis Ritson, but yet all he's got on his record is a split decision loss a few years ago, but why nobody mentioning him? I don't... I, I don't... I don't... I don't know, Russ. I, I just think... Uh, has he fell out with... Has he fell out with Eddie Hearn or whatever, or he's not getting mentioned, or... No, they, they laugh at... Uh... Ritson's team will have to come out and say that, but I don't. The, the kid don't get no PR. Savannah Marshall don't get no PR. We have got Steffi Ball coming out, doing his own PR. Fucking oh, police have raided my gym. 
because uh, what, what's all that about? You see that? Somebody sent me that. Police have raided me gym. Three people have run police and said that we've got gym open and that. So you put that on your social media. Oh my God. Steffi, we know it were you that rung them on your three different phones just to get some PR. <laughs> hey. Steph oh, Steffi Bullwards, Russ, is a recognition to be noticed, do not he? You've only got Jerry and Ringside when when that when uh, the fighter we were uh, the lady fighter were fighting last time. You hear him screaming. I thought it was Steffi Bull Show. I thought it was the Steffi Bull Teddy. Show. So you jab Teddy. I'll tell you what I did see uh, somebody sent me. The WBC have shortlisted six fighters for trainer at year. And uh, Joe Gallagher's one of them, but Steffi Bullin, and he's got a WBC world champion. So I think he's been a bit harshly treated there, don't you? Joe, uh, top and bottom, and it, Joe Gallagher's, we lads from around his area and where he's from, he's done fantastic, hasn't he, Ross? Yeah, but if you, getting back to that though, I'm wondering if, Sullivan at WBC has not put Steffi forward for trainer at year for WBC or shortlisted him because everybody knows that Ray Doyle trained Terry Harper up until they're getting on Sky. Maybe it's because of that, eh? Well, we don't know. We don't get to find these. Bit of karma. We don't get to find. Sorry. Bit of karma for you there, Ginger Balls. Come see me. Stop ringing, this wasting police's time. Little Gibbo's garage in Edlington got broken into. They had a big hole in wall. Police didn't even go see him for 48 hours. But Steffi Bulls, there's a few people punching a few bunch bags in his gym. And there's five cop cars and 12 police turning up. Oh my God. What 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 a nice bit of PR that is to put it to put in your uh, on your social media. You couldn't buy it, could you? Hey? Eh? Keeping your Senate mix. So go on, Steffi. You keep your Senate mix. Inventing stories. Hey, I wonder if he's going to tweet his send back off Terry Harper's Twitter back to his account. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> That'll be good. But anyway, listen, we'll call it a day, Sean. We've had an hour. Can't tell you. Just ask you to one, one or two more questions, please, Russ. Oh, you can't. Go on, then hurry up. What were you knockout year? Knockout at year, Dylan White against uh, Povetkin. Well, it was neck and neck with mine, but I had to go for Davis again. Uh, Crew Davis knocking Cruz out because Cruz had never been knocked out, and Dylan White had. Yeah, they were fighting an older man, and they were but more elite, more elite fighters. I thought. And can you give me your three performances at year? Yeah, Povetkin's performance. Uh, Natasha Jonas's performance, I thought, but she got robbed, didn't she? And uh, Lopez against uh, Canelo, uh, Lopez against uh, what's he called that Russian Lomachenko, Lomachenko yeah. Mine were uh, Arthur against Yard with one hand, Joyce against Dubois, and Lopez against Lomachenko, same as you, mate. All right, all right, then, Sean. Well, this will be up. Uh, in the next couple of days or summer, I've got a bit of a backlog, but it'll be up, so don't worry. And uh, next time I'm over your way, I'll come and see you. All right. All right, mate. All right, mate. Keep your head up, kid. Keep your chin up. Thanks for having me and pointing up with me. Oh, don't worry about it. You're like, you're a lovable rogue, aren't you, Sean? All right, my friend. Text one to no one, don't it, Rose? All right. Keep modeling Lacoste, you boy. All right. Peace out, Sean. Peace out, mate. All right. <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>